cover here. Here we go. We different angle because variety. Uh, I'm gonna read this article which pertains to the Friday the Thirteenth reboot we would have seen. But, you know, as I've done a, a video about it, you know, we're not getting one. Um, uh, I'll, sit, I'll read this to you, and then you can also read it for yourself, maybe, if you're interested. So you don't have to read or hear my commentary. Uh, and I did comment uh, on this article. But, uh, yeah, let's get down to business it's from bloodydisgusting.com. Right. Here's everything you would have seen in the new Friday the 13th reboot. First, let's briefly recap how we got here. As we've been covering here on Bloody, Paramount and Platinum Dunes have been working on a new installment of the Friday the 13th franchise. First, they hired Nika Antisoka, I don't know his name. Uh, it has something to do with Hannibal and Channel Zero. Uh, hired him to pen a script which would have been a straight up 80 set Friday film loaded with brutality. You can read Brad's recap of that script if you're interested. And it, it's written in links, so you can click that. Ultimately, they decided not to go forward with in a Soka's script it's to, be, it's to be directed by David Brunker. Instead, settling on a script penned by Aaron Guzgaki. I don't know some of these people's last names, so I'm sorry if I clearly uh, ruined them. Uh, he wrote Prisoners, which was a good movie. Um, I thought so. The plan for that movie, Bill, is something of an origin story to be to or to be filmed this March, with Breck Eisner, the do the crazies in the director's chair. But alas, Paramount pulled the plug in literally the final hour. In other words, we're not getting in any Friday the 13th movies anytime soon. But we did manage to get our hands on an undated draft of Gusakowski's script. So here's what almost was. With a tentative title, Friday the 13th Part 13, on the front cover. Gusakowski's aborted script begins at Crystal Lake, Camp Crystal Lake, 1977. The two young camp counselors. Jeff and Sandra, an homage to the characters in part two, but not the same characters, are murdered in an opening sequence by a killer wearing a sack mask. The young lovers climb atop the fire camp's fire look to, lookout tower. The masked man slashes Jeff's Achilles tendon while he's scaling the ladder, setting him plummeting to his death. From, a very, from the very top of the tower. He also tosses Sandra to her death. The masked killer, it's pretty safe to assume it's, this is another other than Jason Voorhees, as he looks very much the same way he did in Friday the 13th Part 2. But we soon find out it's actually Elias Voorhees, Jason's father. Yes, the new film is essentially, or was essentially to present Elias 
to the as the original Jason Voorhees, oddly enough. Brad's 2011 April Fool's joke played on the same idea. The first 40 minutes or so of the new Friday the 13th were going to delve into the backstory of the Voorhees family, providing us with our first ever meeting with Ola Elias. The character is, has popped up in comic books, but it has never been in the movies. The script describes... Elias is a, as a camp's park ranger, as a large man, and he claims five victims throughout the first half of the film. Elias is then himself killed by camp cook Pamela Voorhees, who was sent into a violent rage in the years after her beloved son goes missing. It doesn't help that Elias was cheating on Pamela. As for young Jason, he's written as a sympathetic character who wears a white medical mask to, over his hideously deformed face. In addition to the mythology, Jason is also fed by his mother through a feeding tube. He's 16 years old in 1977, as you'd probably expect the other kids at the camp ruthlessly pick on him. Eventually, their torment leads to his death. The film was set to slightly reimagine Jason's drowning. In this version, the older camp, counsel camp counselors, tripping on acid, take him along with him on a boat adventure, armed with a Super 8 camera. They cruelly unmask Jason and capture it all on film. Running away, Jason attempts to swim from a nearby island back to his home at Crystal Lake, but, of course, he drowns. The characters in the script are 17-year-old Annie and her younger sister Mary, who are the daughters of camp owner Steve Christie. Aside from Jason and his mother, Steve is the only character from the original film that pops up in the script, though Gazkowski's pays tribute to many of the franchise's characters through his own character names. And he's a special connection to Jason, has a special connection to Jason, by feeling bad for him and trying to teach him how to swim in the first part of the film, but she becomes entangled in his death. It's her boyfriend, Barry, who spearheads the cruel act that leads to Jason's drowning. The friends agree to destroy the evidence and keep it all a secret. We then jump forward to three years, 1980, where the second half of the film begins to take place. With Jason presumed dead and Elias definitely dead, Mrs. Voorhees embarks on a murder spree that we saw in the original Friday the 13th. Pamela kills a few can't counselors after discovering the Super 8 film and then she discovers it and then she kidnaps Annie and Mary to confront them with what they did. Eventually the to escape Annie uh, you could probably summarize Annie beheads Pamela. What comes next? Jason, now 19 years old, takes over where his father left off. That's right, three killers in one movie. The Voorhees Dynasty. Now wearing a goalie mask, full of grown Jason, who witnesses his mother's murder, is on a rampage on rampage mode for the final twenty five or thirty minutes of the movie. Annie and Mary are along with se uh, several other male and female counselors put up a vigil fight. Annie attacks Jason with an outboard outboard murder motor at one point slicing a hunk of his mask off but most of them are brutally dispatched with relative ease using weapons like a fishing a fishing trident a cleaver a tent stake and his bare hands Jason kills 
seven done to script counselors in a quick flurry of violence. Annie and Mary, our two survivor girls, find their way to the find their way to the fire out tower, lookout tower, where the film begins. Or begin. There's an interesting final act reveal in the script, in which Annie dresses up as Elias Voorhees in an attempt to scare Jason. Like Jenny cosplaying as Mrs. Voorhees, it works, but only briefly. Up in the lookout tower, they come across Elias' journal filled with strange symbols and these words in big letters. Kill him before he's born. Before it's too late. The script doesn't dig deeper into this idea, but the suggestion is that Elias knew Jason would become some kind of superhero human monster, and that he tried for many years to kill his own son before he grew up. The final pages describe what surely would have been an impressive set piece. Jason, smarter than he looks, chops off the lookout tower with the two sisters hiding up top. Annie dies from an injury sustained during the fall, while Mary, revealed to be the final girl, makes her way to safety. As for Jason, he disappears into the night, and he's kept a sick memento. Pamela Severhead adored with it with the Deatrice from the lake it's placed in the trees so her eyes seem to stare across the lake the water watching the camp and that's really it uh, and my comment was that I find this to be interesting I could see myself liking this film if made right I read the script for the other one, uh, written in 2015, and no. To me, the f 2015 script is terrible. Dreadfully stereotypical characters alternates between boring and ridiculous. Jason's more like the Terminator than when he became popular for. I don't know what they were thinking with it. And that one, or in this one, he treats Jason like he's smart, but in the 2015 version, he's like the Terminator in terms of strength, and that's it. This version from the synopsis we have here seemed interesting. It could have been a two and a half hour, if I were the 13th film, which again, if done right, would have been amazing. I wish they didn't pull the plug on the film, though. Especially after the stupid reasons as to why it got axed. And, uh, some of that stuff, uh, some of those sentiments I wrote in the comment, uh, were taken from a friend of mine who's a Friday the 13th fan as well. Uh, because he, you know, he really, uh, he really was right. I read the I did read the script and it is bad. Uh, I think. Yeah, that 2015 one from there until I say things like I, I, I do take things in my own words but for a while there but to like the Terminator part uh, was from my friend. Um, and I took that quick because it was true. It is true. I felt like it's your stereotypical horror film. And yeah, you can say, oh, Friday the 13th is your st a stereotypical horror film as well. You know, okay, fair point, but like Halloween, the film, the writer admittedly uh, uh, says, though, that they ripped off from you could see Halloween as a stereotypical horror film as well. The thing is, though, Halloween and Friday the 13th 
at things differently from the conventional horror movies that, that people saw at those times and what we can see today. You know, looking back at the 70s and 80s, um, you know, or the 13th, you know, you know, they could kill off every single uh, camp counselor if they really wanted to and not have a final person, final girl. They could have at one point maybe a final guy. I mean, they... It's like Friday the 13th wouldn't have a problem breaking the rules of what a horror movie is supposed to be. Um, but again, you know, with franchises like Friday the 13th, have been around as long as they have, they make their own formula. So, there's a certain formula, yes, but it doesn't need to be looked at as a stereotypical film. I thought the characters in that 2015 script were really annoying. Eh, just, they just weren't good. I mean, maybe you think they're good, that's fine. But they're like, oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's sexy. Oh, I'm getting turned on. Oh, I know that that Friday the Thirteenth is not known for its Academy Award-winning screenwriting, but you could take cues from like Part Four. They made characters that you cared about, and yes, Jason is going to kill them, but at least you cared more for those characters than perhaps you did in the previous three films where the killer killed them off you know you, you kind of you had a, you cared about Crispin Glover you know like yeah okay as the film goes on like oh, he's gonna die but you feel for him spoiler if you haven't seen that uh, that film Friday the 13th the final chapter but But even then, you know, look at Kevin Bacon, again, spoiler, he, uh, that was like one of his first movies, and he died. It's like the people that became big names in you know, Friday the 13th now, it's like they died. Uh, and spoiler alert, but, well, well, you know what, no, I'm not even going to say any more. That was some of the famous people in Friday the 13th. But basically, you know, Friday the 13th has its own formula now. And the thing is, it's like... Were they trying, in that 2015 script, trying to actually do that formula? Perhaps, maybe, you could make that argument... They wouldn't, but, you know, I guess there is an argument that could be found there. But the thing is, it seemed like a your stereotypical 80s horror film that isn't good. And for that synopsis, even though some people didn't like the fact that, oh, Jason would only be there for, like, the last act, like, the last third... Like Friday the 13th Part 9. He showed up at the bookend of the film. And that film was awful, but... You know, spoiler alert again, I guess. Jason really isn't even in Friday the 13th 9. Jason goes to hell. He's not even really in Part 5 either, which I dislike a lot. Though... So, Though there is like a flashback in the very beginning, or not even a flashback, a dream. And the character has hallucinations of Jason, so he is there periodically, but you know, still disappointing. And the only other time in Jason goes to hell that you see Jason is that like the character sees the reflection and. Like, if you see the character, because Jason body jumps and possesses people's body because he's like this worm demon thing. 
and he goes around and body swaps. But when they're in front of a mirror, us and as well as a, a victim that could see that, they see Jason Voorhees. And then when they look back, it's, it's somebody else entirely, and yet it's Jason. Uh, and that film itself was just... Bleh. But with this potential film, with that synopsis, uh... I think that could have worked if it was two and a half hours, because then e Elias, Pamela, and Jason would all have 50 minutes apiece of screen time. And, and some might say that's too long for a Friday the 13th film, but this would be the 13th Friday the 13th film. You know, make it a little special, make it interesting. And yeah, origin stories, we don't need... Uh, a lot of origin stories, really, I know. But the thing is, if they could do it right, then... Who would care? I mean, may, yeah, you'd have those, like, I don't really like that it's an origin story, but it, it's a good movie, you know, it's a good Friday the 13th film overall, so... You know, outside of that, that people might not have any real complaints. Uh, that you might have with some of the other films in the franchise, because there's 12 films. You're going to have bad movies, some bad uh, sequels. And, uh, you know, a two-and-a-half-hour Friday the 13th film uh, released in Halloween time, uh, you know, I think that would have been pretty awesome. Yeah, I don't want to... I wouldn't want uh, a Michael Myers type backstory upbreaking for Jason Voorhees like Rob Zombie did. And, uh, and look, I don't hate Rob Zombie's Halloween. You know, it's not better than the original, but, you know, I don't hate it. Uh, personally, but, you know, there are those that aren't fans of it, and I've seen people who've made videos and read some reviews, and they have legitimate complaints, but, you know, overall, I th thought it was a decent film, it was alright. I just wouldn't want that kind of similar story for Jason, personally. Um, and also, that, that script, the synopsis of uh, which the website gave, because that's why I call it, I call it a synopsis, because we don't have a script, they didn't send us a link where you can visit the script here, and it just, it could work if didn't done right, I feel, uh, and perhaps that's just me saying that because I wasn't a fan of that 2015 script and I stumbled upon this uh, website which you know, yeah, I'll leave in the description below so you can read it as well so you don't have to hear me talk but if you, won't, you know if you can read it without my voice um because it had stumble maybe you, you probably wouldn't you know reading it to yourself you know, stuff, you wouldn't really stumble but I did, so you might have found that annoying, and I understand. But, you know, disappointing. Fairly disappointing, the fact that this didn't happen. But, hey, you know, I guess that's life. But, you know, hopefully at some point us Friday the 13th fans will get to see a Friday the 13th film in the future. 
doesn't look like this here unless Paramount decides to reverse the action all of a sudden but I'm sure all those people are now either looking for other things to do or attached to things now Paramount needs to get its act together I don't hate Paramount, but you know, I feel this had potential, personally. Uh, you might disagree, that's fine. But, uh, you know. Yeah, anyway, that's all I wanted uh, really to say, so. Thank you for watching. Bye.